Hey everyone, it's Katherine and I'm back with another tutorial to get you on the right track to creating your very own digital planner. So just in case you missed it, yesterday morning I uploaded a video on how to link all of your tabs and how to link your index page. And in that video I said that there was a problem with Keynote version 8.2 and you couldn't link things properly. So, I actually have an update on that. You can still use Keynote on your computer if you had already updated to version 8.2. You just have to use the iCloud version. So, I posted a video yesterday afternoon on how you can do that. So, I will link to that in the video description. Anyway, this is everything that we've done so far. This is our index page. Um, these are our linked months. And today, I'm going to show you how to create dividers. You can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes. For dividers in your digital planner and how you can create a layout in Adobe Illustrator and then import that as a page into your digital planner. Now, like I've said before, you don't have to create your layouts on Adobe Illustrator. There are several other different types of software that you can create layouts in and I'll link to all of those, including Illustrator, in the video description. I just recommend Adobe products if you plan on selling these digital planners. So, Dividers are not a necessity for a digital planner, but they're very helpful for a few different reasons besides just the look factor. The look factor is a big thing though because they actually look really nice when you're flipping through the planner. It's just nice to have those sections because it makes it look more like a real planner. But also they're very helpful because they keep you from accidentally deleting a linked page. Once this is imported into your app that you use for digital planning, you don't want to accidentally delete a linked page because it'll completely mess your links up. So having some kind of divider page, while it's not a requirement, it does prevent you from deleting one of your links. So I'm going to show you how I set up dividers. There's actually several different ways that you can do this, but I'm just going to show you a quick way to do it. So First thing that I want to do is I want to change the color of some of my dividers. I usually like to match my dividers to my tabs. So all of my white tabs will have white dividers and all of my black tabs will have black dividers. And that obviously excludes the front and the back tab up here because that just takes you to the cover of the planner and then the back of the planner. But all of these, the dividers will match the tabs. So I'm going to show you how to change the color. And I actually don't need the, to change the color for my odd numbered slides because those are all white anyway. Oh, and <laughs> that's so funny that I was just talking about the update and this just popped up on my computer. Um, I'm going to hit OK and then definitely not update Keynote. So anyway, like I was saying, I don't need to change the color of the odd numbered slides since my tabs are white, but I am going to change the color of the even numbered slides. So there's actually a few different things that you could do here. If you wanted all of your tabs to have really cute patterns, you could upload a pattern as an image and that would be something fun to do in your digital planner. You don't have to fill them with a color, but I'm just going to fill them with a color. So I'm going to click on my page and when I say page, that just means that white rectangle that's right here. And black is just one of their automatic colors over here. So I can easily just click black right here and it'll change it to black. If the color that I wanted to use wasn't right there, I would just go to fill and then hit this color wheel and then select my color in one of many different ways. So I've changed that slide to black and now I'm just going to go down and I'm going to change every other slide to black. Okay, so now I've changed these. And what I like to do, in addition to matching the slides with the tabs, I like to put the month for each section on top. So you know for sure when you're looking at all of the pages in your planner at a glance in your app, you see exactly where your sections are. So just like I did when I created the tabs, I type this out in Illustrator, save it as individual images, and then bring it into Keynote. And that just gives it the best results. So I'm going to pull up Illustrator. And my type tool is automatically selected for me because that's the last tool that I use. But if it's not, just come over here to the T to select your type tool. And I'm on my desktop now. 
since I had to switch over to this to use the older version of Keynote. So it's a little bit different on my desktop. If I was on my laptop, I would have a character panel over here. But since I'm on my desktop and the screen is bigger, the character panel pops up up here. So just depending on if you're on a laptop or desktop, it may look a little bit different, but it all works the same way. So here's my character panel and I'm gonna find that bouncy bell font. And it's actually right here because I just tested it out a few minutes ago. So there's my font and I'm gonna make the font size really big because I want these to be large on the page. So I think I'm gonna make the font like maybe 225 and that's gonna be big. So then I'm just going to type January and I'm going to start with a lowercase j because I just like the look of everything kind of matching up and being lowercase. So there is my January and now I want to change this text color to the same pink that I used for my tab so it's all color coordinated. So I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to type in the hex code for the hot pink that I used right here. I'm going to select this fill right here and the hex code is FB6299. So now it's pink and it's large. So in order to save this as a PNG image with a transparent background, I'm just going to go to file, export, and export as. And I'm already in the folder that I want to save this under. So if you're not, you would just pull that up. And I have all of these labeled for my tabs that I used the other day. So instead of just typing 1-Jan, I'm going to do 1-January. So I know this is for my section and not my tab. Okay, so I just redid January and the reason is I noticed when I was saving February that this is at 72 PPI and I just don't like that. It's going to look a little bit fuzzy. Um, that's just not very high quality. So I'm switching this to 300 PPI so that it's better quality when I import it into Keynote. So just make sure if you want to have a high quality planner, don't worry about your file size at this point. Just save it at 300 PPI. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that you don't need to worry if your lettering goes off of your artboard a little bit. That's not a big deal at all. When you export these images, it picks up the entire text, even if it's not centered with the artboard. It only picks up the text. So as you can see here, I accidentally clicked. Um, I'm about to save February and see how... I don't know how much you can see on your screen, but it picked up the tail of the Y, even though that's off to the side of the artboard. So now I'm just gonna do the rest of the months. Okay, so I've got all of my months saved and I'm just gonna go back into Keynote. And now I'm gonna import these as images. So I'm already on my January slide and I'm just gonna select insert, choose, and then here's my folder. It's already pulled up, but again, if not, you would just find your folder, however you need to find it, and I'm gonna import January. So that brought it in huge. So what I need to do is I need to figure out my page size and then adjust my lettering accordingly. So my page size, I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna to go to arrange to get the size and it's 952 points wide. So I'm gonna click on my lettering and I'm gonna see what 850 points looks like and I'm gonna constrain proportions to keep everything proportional. And that looks pretty good to me because I want the text to be big. So now I'm just gonna center it with the page and Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. This is one of those situations where I have to eyeball it because this doesn't happen all the time with fonts, but sometimes you'll come across this and it really just depends on the developer. This developer, um, while this is an awesome font and I still recommend purchasing it, I think it was only like $8. So it's very reasonably priced and you can use it commercially. Um, there's a big space between the lowercase letters. So this is picking up 
see when this box is around it, it picks it up as much larger than it actually is over the top. Because even though there's nothing there, something about the spacing, it just left a big gap in the space. But it's still an awesome font. That's not really a downfall to a font. It's just something you have to deal with sometimes. So in this situation, you can perfectly align it vertically, but you're going to have to kind of eyeball it to align it with the page. But you can go by your tabs and that helps a little bit. So, okay, I've aligned this horizontally and now I need to align it vertically with the page. When it was right here, this is where things get confusing. This is aligning it vertically with the whole slide. Like I was explaining yesterday, if you can, if you look closely, it's hard to see on the pink, this line that's going vertically down the center goes from the top of the slide to the bottom of the slide. So when I move it a little bit to the left, you can see that the line is no longer going through the whole slide. It's only going through the page. So now it's aligned vertically with the page, which is what we want. So sometimes I have to let go of my mouse and look at it for a second before I'm like, wait a minute, that's off a little bit. Sometimes I stare at something for a few minutes before I figure out if I'm happy with it or not. So now it's vertically aligned with the page. All right, so I've got all of my months entered and now my sections are done. So if you want to preview your planner at this point, you can go up here and hit play and it takes it to full screen. I know that this recording is cutting off part of the bottom, um, but this is taking up my whole screen, but I opted out of recording my dashboard on my home screen so it's not showing you the whole screen but it is showing me the whole screen but you can just click through and see all of these tabs they work so see when I click on January it takes me to January when I click on July it takes me to July October it takes me to October March it takes me to March and when I hit back it takes me to the back so there you go. So now we've got our dividers. Now we're going to cover pages. So pages are a little bit more complicated and that's why this is going to be kind of a long video. I create my layouts in Illustrator and then bring them in to my Keynote template. So I'm going to save this really quick since that just took a little bit of time to get all this done. So now I've got this saved. You want to make sure that you save pretty frequently so in case something crazy happens like your computer dies or you know something I don't know something happens you don't lose your work now I'm going to build pages so we've got every single page right here is linked so now we just need to insert more slides to represent our pages so there's a few different ways that you can do this it's all completely up to you I've done it both ways I've released planners where I have pages in between my sections and then you can just flip through it like a normal planner. And I've also released a planner where I have all of my blank pages at the end and then anybody that's familiar with digital planning that has that planner, they're able to duplicate those pages any way that they want to in any section that they want to. And I just provide one copy of each page and then they just duplicate it. So you can do it either way. Either way works. I'm going to show you both ways. I'm only going to create two layouts in this video. I'm going to create a monthly layout and a weekly layout. And they're both going to be completely undated because I'm just making this planner really quick. But obviously there's a lot of different paths that you can take with your layouts. You can get really creative with it if you want to. You can date everything. You can choose not to. Um, it's completely up to you. Just use your imagination. But I'm just going to create quick and simple layouts. So first thing I need to do is copy a slide so I can have my pages. I want my pages to be the same size as the dividers right here. So I want to copy this January slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go to light table 
and my January slide is selected, I'm going to hit Command C and then Command V. And that inserted another slide directly behind my January slide. So I'm going to go to that slide and I'm going to delete this January so that all that's left is the page. And now this is just a page and this page, it has links that work that will still take you to the sections, but this page is not linked to anything. And when you do it this way, you might be freaking out about your links because you're like, oh my gosh, I linked February to page four and now I've got this page as page four. This does not affect your links. It actually updates. So once you've linked a slide, it knows to link to that page no matter what. So see, now when you check your February links, it takes you to slide five instead of slide four. Um, so that is completely safe as long as you don't delete those pages that you initially set up to be linked, Keynote is going to cover it for you. So they've got your back. See, December is now slide 15 instead of slide 14. January is still slide 3 because um, it needs to be the front is still slide 1. So I think you get the idea. But don't even worry about your links because you can keep copying them. You can keep adding pages. And as long as those master pages are there, you're good. So here's our page. And now I'm going to create a layout for this page. I am going to create a monthly calendar and then I'll create a weekly calendar. So the very first thing that I need to do is figure out my dimensions. And I use a website to do this. Sometimes I use Photoshop to do it, but if you don't have Photoshop, I'm going to show you this website because it's really easy to use. The way that you need to figure out your page dimensions is to figure out how many points or pixels your page is and then use some kind of way to calculate the image size. When you build things in Keynote, it's going to do it at 72 DPI or PPI or whatever you want to call it. So 72 is not what I like to use, um, as I've stated in this video and other videos, because it's not the best quality. It looks good from afar, but then when you're in your app and you try to zoom in, it is very pixelated. In my opinion, that's not something that I like. If I paid for a digital planner and I zoomed in on it and it was really pixelated, I would be pretty disappointed. So to avoid that, you need to create your layouts at 300 PPI or DPI. So this page at 72 PPI, now bear with me here, has a width of 952 and a height of 725. So I'm going to write that down. And when I say write it down, I mean type it on my phone. So the width is 952 and the height is 725. Okay, so I'm going to go to this website. I already have it pulled up and I'm going to link to this in the video description because it's a really long website right here. And it'll automatically take you to this calculator right here and we're converting pixels to inches. So we want to put in that our DPI is 72 and our width is 952 and our height is 725. So that gives us, this apparently does not round at all. So that gives us a width of 13.22 inches and I'm just going to say 10.07 inches for height. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Illustrator to create my layout. And I'm going to go to File, New. And my RGB color mode is selected. That's what you want when you're doing digital planners. And I've got it at 300 PPI, which is perfect. So now I'm just going to change my inches. So inches is automatically selected over here. If it's not for you, you would just click this drop down menu and select inches. And you would type in, in this case, 13.22 for the width and 10.07 for the height and then click create. Okay, so now this artboard is the exact dimension that we want to use. First, um, just really quickly, I'm going to create a folder for my pages. What I like to do right when I open this page, let me pull up my layers panel. If your layers panel isn't automatically showing, you can go to windows and layers. And then this brings up all of your layers right here. 
because you're going to want to see this in case there's anything you ever want to hide. I'm going to create a rectangle really quickly and I'm just going to click to create it and I'm going to create it to the same dimensions as my pages. And the reason that I'm doing this is because your artboard, when you save these, it's going to save it as a transparent background and you actually don't want that for the pages that you import into your planner because when it saves it as a transparent background it doesn't even take into consideration the size of the artboard so it won't be sized properly when you bring it in but when you create this rectangle to the size of your page and you make sure that is selected right here and you want it to be filled with white which it automatically is and then you want to get rid you would click this the stroke box right here and then click none right here to get rid of the box around it. So now you've got a white background and you can work on this. So I'm going to lock this really quick. My layers panel disappeared. So again, I'm just going to go to windows and then layers and I'm going to hit that arrow and then I'm going to lock this um, because I don't want to accidentally move it or select it or anything. So my white background is locked. So now I'm going to create a calendar layout and I'm not going to include the months so this can be used under every single month and people can just write in the month or use stickers for the month. So I'm going to start it on a Monday and I'm just going to make it as big as possible on the page. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a square. So usually I just create a square and then figure out how many I need and how big that I want them to be. And I usually have to play around a lot before I get it exactly right. So I'm going to create seven boxes across and then five boxes down for this calendar. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to click on the canvas. And let's start off, let's think. We need room for a notes section and then the canvas is 13.22 inches wide and we need seven boxes across. So I'm going to make each box 1.5 inches by 1.5 inches. And I want these boxes to have a border so I need to change this stroke right here. So I'm going to select stroke and color and then that changes it to black and if you want to see what your stroke is because you may want to make it thinner or thicker you can go to window and click on stroke and it'll bring up this stroke panel and so right now it's at one point so that's what one point looks like that's what I prefer but you can always make it bigger by increasing the size you can make it thinner oh you got to select it you can make it thinner by decreasing the size. That would be 0 0.25 points. So I'm going to go back to one point because that's what I think looks best. And now I'm just going to place this somewhere on my screen right here. So I've got my first box and now I need to duplicate this six more times. So I'm going to hit Command C and then Command V. And there's another box. And this is the beautiful thing about Illustrator it helps you align things so easily. So I'm gonna drag this second box and I'm gonna look for these pink lines right there and it's letting me know that it is horizontally aligned with that box. So now I'm gonna drag it closer and see how the word intersect popped up. So now these boxes are intersected and they're lined up perfectly. So now I've got two boxes. Now I'm just going to drag and click to copy two boxes and I'm going to hit Command C, Command V. And now I've got two boxes and I'm just doing that same thing. So now I've got four boxes intersected. I'm going to copy two more, Command C, Command V, and then do the same thing. And I need one more box for each day of the week. So I'm going to drag these over and then I just need to copy one box this time. Here's a box for every single day of the week. So now I'm going to copy this entire row. I have it all selected. You can see they're selected because of the blue. I'm going to hit Command C and Command V. 
and I looked for my intersect. Now they're intersected, so now I've got two rows, and I want five rows. So I'm going to copy now both rows, Command-C, Command-V. and intersect. Now there's four rows and now I just need one more row. And there is my calendar. So now that I've got all of these boxes, I'm going to drag these kind of down here so now I've got room to put the day up here. I've got room for a note section or some kind of section over here. And then there's plenty of room at the top for people to use stickers or write in the month. Since I'm leaving this blank so I can use it in multiple sections, um, you could also type the month up there if you wanted to type the month for every calendar. Okay, so now I'm going to start typing the days and I'm going to show you how to align that with the boxes. I believe that I want to use the November font again. So I'm going to go over here to my type tool and I'm going to select November from my drop down menu. Here it is. And I want to make the font size, let's start with 36 and we can go from there. And I always start with Wednesday when I type because that is the longest, like letter wise, that's the longest day of the week. So that's a good day to start typing when you're trying to figure out your font size because you want everything else to be proportional to that. And you might come into problems if you start with Monday because Monday's a lot shorter word-wise than Wednesday. So I'm going to start with Wednesday. And so this is font size 36. And that actually fits pretty well. I want it to be a little bit above the box and then centered with the box. So font size 36 is going to work for us. So I'm going to type the rest of the days and I'll show you how to align all of these. Okay, see when I bring Monday down, it's got that pink line again and it's lined up with Wednesday. So the bottom part is aligned, which is what we want for these days. Okay, so I've got all of my days in and they're aligned on the bottom, which is what you want, but just to make sure I'm going to select all of them by clicking and dragging, and then I'm going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Align. So now I'm just going to click on Monday, and when I do that, it's going to align all of this other stuff with Monday. So I'll click Vertical Align Bottom on my Align window, and now it didn't even move anything because everything was already aligned with Monday. Now I want to center these with the boxes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the day and then I'm just going to select this top box right here. So I'm going to click and drag and then I don't want to accidentally center these with my artboard. I want to center just the day with the box and the box is already exactly where it needs to be. So I'm going to click on the box and I see that that is selected again. Both are selected because there is a blue box around both, but then this box has like a thicker blue line around it. So I know that that is the selection that I'm going to be aligning Monday to. So then I'm going to come up here to my align window and I'm going to click on align horizontal center. And it just centered Monday with that box, which in turn, it centered it with the entire row of boxes. So I'm going to do that for each day of the week. So I've got that part set up. And let's say I want to create a couple little sections over here, one for priorities and then one for task. So I'm going to create a box. I know these are an inch and a half tall, so two boxes would be three inches because that's 1.5 times two. And I think this area is a little bit wider than 1.5 inches. So when I'm playing around with aligning this stuff, but I know it's gonna be a little bit wider, I don't know the exact width, I just click on my shape tool, which this is the rectangle tool that's selected now, and see that pink line, that's how you know you're doing good with alignment. I go to where I want to start 
the rectangle and then I just click hold down on my mouse and drag for the width and then I drag down for the height and I want a little more space so this is 1.75 inches wide by 3 inches tall and when you do it like that, it might fill your box in black like it just did mine. So all you have to do is go to your fill panel right here and make it white again. And the hex code for white is FFFFFF. And then you want to go to your stroke and color that in. And you can see up here that the stroke is one point. It colored it in white. <laughs> Let me color it in black. So I'm clicking on my stroke panel again and the hex color for black is 0000000. zero, 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 zero. And now it's got the box around it. So that's going to be my area for priorities. And then I'm going to make a box for task as well. So to do that, instead of clicking and dragging, I'm just going to select this box and I'm going to hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste because I want them to be the exact same width. And then see how this is aligned with the bottom two boxes and it's also centered with the box on top of it because you can see those pink lines. And again, I'm pointing to these on my screen like you can see what I'm talking about, but I think you can see those pink lines on your screen. So now I'm just going to drag this box up because I want the task to be a little bit taller. So now it's going to be 3.75 inches tall, which is going to make it meet right in the middle of my middle row, row of boxes. So that'll look pretty good. So now I'm going to type priorities and place it up here. And I'm going to type task and place it down here. So I'm going to go back to my type tool and the last setting is automatically selected except I just messed it up okay the last font is automatically selected so I'm going to click and I'm going to type in priorities and I'm going to align this with my days so you see that pink line so you know it's aligned with the bottom part of the days and then again I'm just going to select both the lettering and the box click on the box my line window is still popped up so I'm going to click here and click align horizontal centers and now that's lined up so now I'm going to type task and I'm going to move that down here I think that looks pretty good right there and select both select the box hit align centers so now I've got an undated calendar and now I want to align everything with the artboard. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag and that's going to select everything on my artboard. And I'm going to hit Command G to group everything. So now I want to align this with the artboard. So what I'm going to do I'm going to pull up my align window again, and I forgot to tell you this earlier. You want to make sure if you don't see this distribute spacing down here, mine was gone just a second ago, you would just click these lines right here and click on show options, and it's going to show you this area down here. So under align two, I'm going to select align to artboard. And now with all of this selected, I'm going to click on align horizontal center and it just aligned it with my artboard which means it's aligned with the page. So now I've got an undated calendar set up. If you wanted to you could make this a dated calendar and you would just type the numbers individually and then place them wherever you wanted to place them in the box. So in one of the corners or just wherever you wanted to place them and you could make a dated calendar. And if you wanted to create a monthly header You've got room to do that up here. You would just type a header like this. And, you know, you could play around with the sizing. And if you align that to your artboard, it'll align that with the calendar as well. So, 
you know, there it is with a heading. Um, but I'm going to delete that heading. And, okay, so now we want to save this. And like I was saying earlier, the very first step that I did was I created a rectangle that had a white filling. So when we save this as a PDF, it's going to save that white background and it's going to be proportional with the page, which is great. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to file and I'm sorry that my screen keeps moving. I have this wireless mouse that I'm not a huge fan of for my desktop and it just, it's so sensitive. Okay. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to save as, and I usually like to save my templates as well. So I'm just going to label this monthly calendar and I'm going to go to my pages folder to save it there. And I'm going to save that as a template really quick. Okay, but now I need a version of this to import as a page. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and it's still showing monthly calendar as an Adobe Illustrator file, but I'm going to change this to Adobe PDF. And I'm going to click on Save. And to reduce the file size of my planner, I do want to take that into consideration when I'm saving my pages. I'm going to turn off Preserve Illustrator Editing Capabilities, and I'm going to turn off Create Acrobat Layers from Top Level Layers. And now I'm going to hit Save PDF, and it's going to give you this warning right here, which is totally fine. Since I saved the template, I can always edit the template and save that as a PDF. There's really no need to save the PDF in a format where you can edit it because, you know, there's just really no need once you get it right. So now I've got that saved. I'm going to go back in to Keynote and here's my page. So now I'm going to go to insert, choose, and I'm going to go to my pages folder and I'm going to bring in that PDF and see how that is perfect. Like it lines up exactly with the page and you can't even tell that white pages behind it. And there it is. There's my calendar. It fits perfectly. So that's how you import a page. And I still am going to create a weekly layout. I'm going to do that here in a minute. And I'm just going to kind of speed through that at the end of this video. But I want to show you how you would copy this page all throughout your planner. So you definitely want one of these pages in every section I say definitely, but you may not. Um, if you wanted to move this page to the end so they could just duplicate it as needed per section, you would just go to light table and then you would click and drag this slide to the end. And if you want to go back and test your links, um, you can see that February has now moved back to slide four, so you're good there. And anyway, that would be if you want to place your blank pages at the end and then they can be duplicated throughout the planner by whoever's using the planner. But if you wanted to use this in between every section as a calendar, which a lot of planners have, you would just move it there and then make sure it's selected. Hit Command C and Command V and it's gonna paste it and you can move that in between February and March. Command C, Command V, and then just move it to where you wanna place it. And now you've got a monthly calendar for each month. So I'm going to go to our index page and I'm going to hit play and just check this. So when you go to February, it still takes you to February. And then I'm just going to click to the side. There's our monthly calendar. I know the bottom, like I was saying earlier, is cut off. But I can see the bottom. You just can't because it's not filming my entire screen. But your links still work. So when I go to June, it takes me to June. Everything is all placed. So at the end of this video, I'm just going to do a speed through of myself creating um, a weekly layout and then placing that in the planner. And when you have multiple pages per planner, all you would do is copy and paste, you know, the pages and then insert your layouts the exact same way that I just showed you how to do it. And in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to save your planner as a PDF and how to check the file size of your planner and then reduce that file size so your planner works a little bit better in the digital planning app. 
When I say a little bit better, I mean it works a lot better. It prevents the planner from lagging when it's imported into a digital planning app. So that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, if you wanted, you know, multiple pages per section, which I'm, which I'm sure you would, you would just copy and paste the pages and import your layouts the same way that I just did. If you wanted to link these pages, because some digital planners are dated and they're linked, you would do that with your shapes. The same way that I showed you how to link the tabs and the images, you would link with a shape. So, for example, you could import a square and then you could change the color to white so you can't even see it. And now that's white. You can see it that's covering the um, boxes right now, but you could just, I'm going to bring that over here and shrink it down just a little bit and then link that, let's say, to page number or slide number five and then bring that here. And now that box is linked, but you know, you could do that with numbers too. You could bring in numbers to date your calendar and link those that same way and then just place them on top of your layout wherever you want them to be and then link them and they're good to go. So I am going to delete that shape. So anyway, that's all there is to it. Um, stay tuned at the end of this video if you want to see a speed through of how I create and import the weekly layouts. I'm not going to talk during that part. I'm just going to do it and do a speed through of it. But anyway, if you don't want to stick around, that's fine. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to be alerted every time I upload a new lesson. Or subscribe if you want to follow along with my digital plan with me videos and digital planning tutorials. And make sure you check out my website, naptimealt.com, where there's tons of planner-related freebies that you can download now.